Hello Model Railroad fans and welcome to Vintage Road and Rail. In today's video I'm going to be unboxing and taking a look at this Walther's train line uh, GP15-1 CSX locomotive and since I still have them out of the box and on the track we'll see how well it can handle pulling these uh, 10 freight cars in this one caboose. So let me get uh, set up on the tripod and I will be right back. All right, well before we uh, start unboxing this locomotive, and like I said at the outset, this is a uh, EMD GP15-1 it says. So I thought before we pull this out of the box, I printed out some information, I'll just put it right here, um, that I got off of the website, just so you can kind of know what to uh, expect if you want one of these locomotives yourself. Alright, there are going to be six railroads, or at least that's what I saw on the uh, Walther's train site, uh, website I should say. So in addition to the CSX that you see here, you can get this in BNSF, Canadian Pacific, Conrail, Norfolk and Southern and Union Pacific. Uh, some of the features that it lists on the website now it, I don't know if it remember I can't remember if it put this on the features or if I added this but this is a DC only locomotive it's not DCC and I don't even think it's DCC ready. It has directional headlights so you do have front and back headlights. Uh, it's all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickup so that's pretty good. Uh, it says it's got a powerful can motor with flywheels, uh, heavy duty cast metal frame for adding for added pulling power, colorful paint and lettering schemes, body mounted magnetic knuckle couplers, and RP25 metal wheels. Uh, in addition to being able to buy the locomotive solo like this, there is a train set you can get. It's called the Trainline Flyer Express fast freight train set and that will come with two cars and a matching caboose a 38 by 45 inch oval track and a power supply and it can be gotten in the CSX, BNSF and CP or Canadian Pacific I should say. Um, that doesn't really pertain so much to the review of this product but I just thought I'd throw that out there. So if you want to buy one of these and you were to go to Walther's site the retail price of this is going to be $89.98, but I'm seeing it on Amazon for $69.98. However, Train World has it for $59.99. So you can get it considerably cheaper than the retail of $89.98. Uh, not entirely sure what Train World's shipping is, so you may wind up paying about the same amount as Amazon after shipping because if you have a Prime account, shipping will be free. So, but if you look around, uh, don't pay $89.98 for it. I mean, look, look around, you can find it much cheaper. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let us take a closer look at this locomotive. Move that paper out of here. Now, before I do that, <laughs> one more delay, sorry about that. Um, I bought this this is more just for full disclosure, I guess. Um, I did not pay but $25 for this locomotive. Uh, if you watched my last video about these Tyco cars, I was up at my local uh, train store, and they had basically got a lot of stuff in from an estate sale. And they told me that as near as they could tell, this is brand new and has not been run. But because they didn't get it themselves from Walther's they could not sell it as a new product so they just marked it for $25 I was not gonna pass that up and here it is so I just wanted to put that out there uh, for full disclosure that while they told me it's brand new I only have their word to go for on it but I'm gonna proceed with this um, unboxing and review as if it is new alright so now Let's get this out of the box. Or let's let's take a look at the box. So we see here Walther's train line. And it's going to pretty much say that on three of the four sides. 
and over here you'll see the $25 price tag but under it you can see where someone paid $72 for it and you can see the CSX GP15-1 locomotive and here is the uh, the number you would look up on Walther's site if you wanted to find it and then just some general information on the back all right well I believe I've delayed and talked enough let's get this baby out of the box all right so let's set the box off to the side and before we take the locomotive out of the styrofoam you will get a little bit of information from Walther's it gives you some support information, who to call if you have any issues. It gives you some general servicing information, cleaning the wheels, lubrication, oiling. It shows you where to remove the screws. So basically, to get in this thing, you need to remove both couplers. And there's two screws on one end and two screws on the other. So you're going to remove six screws, ultimately, to get inside this thing. And then here is a look at the inside. So it does have a circuit board but that's mainly just to control the directional lighting however I would imagine it would be pretty easy to desolder the wires and solder in a basic uh, DCC board and a little bit more troubleshooting tips here and that's all there is for the paperwork so this is packed in pretty good in this styrofoam packaging and it's got a, a plastic lid that just lifts straight off and the only additional accessory besides the locomotive is what looks to me, I have not pulled this out, but it looks like snow plows. So I have not obviously put those on. And then here is the locomotive itself. Now it's wrapped in this softer plastic protected to keep it protected. So let's go ahead and turn this over. Let it fall out of there. Let's set that off to the side. And then there we go. And here is our locomotive. Let me get a pencil that I can use just to kind of point with. So we'll just start looking at the side here. Most of the detail, as you can see, is molded in. Train line is Walther's uh, more budget locomotive um, their kind of middle of the road is going to be their uh, train line I believe it's not train line their uh, main line and then of course they've got their proto as their higher end so our road number is 1545 and we've got nice yellow lettering for the CSX on this uh, really nice color of blue but as you can see everything is molded in uh, the grill you can't see through it right here right here um, and everything is just molded in so nothing is separately applied except for the handrails so here's our steps and the front handrail here and the one going along the side everything looks good here's our fuel tank and this is our trucks so there's some molded in detail here uh, which I don't hurt, it doesn't hurt my feelings that this little guy here is molded in because I've got a couple of Atherin units that this pops off all the time and really annoys me. So let's look at the bottom. So here's where our coupler is screwed in, and there are those. Whoop, I'm making sure I'm on the in the camera here. This is where your coupler is screwed down, and these are these two screws that you need to remove. And you can see one of the flywells in here four wheels with pickup and they have drive remove this coupler and two more screws and again you got your eight wheel drive eight wheel pickup okay and we got our knuckle coupler here handrail with molded in chain and you can see our road number here in the CSX and I love how it has like a yellow end cap and this is our backup light Moving on around to the other side, it's pretty much identical to the first side. Here's our handrails, our road number, and I didn't mention it, but we have plastic windows in place there. Moving around to the front, we don't have any ditch lights, 
Um, but we do have another knuckle coupler, handrails, and we got the molded in chain. And here's our front headlight, and here is our um, number boards. Only the light is lit up, not the number boards. And then we have some detailing molded in here and on the front there. And lastly, let's take a look at the roof. So we can see our horns. And we've got some molded in detail to represent, I'm assuming, the exhaust. And then we have some molded in um, grills for exhaust or vents. And that is pretty much the walk around for this locomotive. Uh, it's a very nice looking locomotive. Let me just put this out here. But as I said, it is a budget locomotive. So, and it is DC only. But, you know, if you're looking for something simple and should be pretty reliable, which we're going to see here in a moment when we uh, put it on the track and give it a test, this should fit the bill. All right, well, let me uh, stop right here for just a moment, and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me just, I don't know that I need to stop it. Let's just unscrew this. We'll just set the tripod off out of the way, because I've already got my little ramp there to load up the locomotive, and I've got my DC power pack plugged in. All right, so let's grab the locomotive here and let's slide it down onto the rails make sure it's on there good all right and so here are the Tyco cars that we looked at in the last video and we got out of focus there they're still on the track but I uh, put up the locomotive we was using to pull those and we're going to use this one so let's get some power and our lights on and we're moving and there's where we're at on our throttle so it has pretty nice slow speed oh I think I hung up on my switch there all right so let's throw the switch back up we're gonna let it just gradually creep around keep going out of focus here I apologize I got the washing machine going in the background so let's go ahead and stop it and let's throw it in reverse and when we give it some power you should see that backup light come on and there it is all right so let's slowly hook up to these cars here. And we got a really good slow speed. There we go. All right, let me move this tripod a little bit further out of the way. I don't want to be tripping all over it. All right, so we're going to give this a nice slow speed and see how it pulls these uh, 11 cars in total. Oop, put it in forward. All right, so it is pulling them all, and that is a really nice slow speed. That is not bad at all. Let's keep going out of focus. All right, I had to stop the video for a second because I could not get the camera to refocus for whatever dumb reason. I apologize for that. So we've got a nice little slow crawl going here, so uh, let's kick up the speed a little bit. That is running really nice, running really smooth. All right, I'm gonna back up here for a little bit and see if I can get the whole table. It's only a six by four table, so it's pretty easy to do. And just let you kind of get a bird's eye view here. But that's running really quiet. 
nice and smooth. Alright, well, that is the Walther's Trainline GP15-1 CSX locomotive. Fairly basic on the detail, everything's molded in, but it looks to be really quiet, really reliable, a nice puller. I would imagine it could easily pull twice this number of cars, it's not even struggling a little bit. So if you're looking for a uh, budget locomotive around the $70 mark, uh, you can't go wrong with this um, little GP15-1. And if CSX is not uh, what you're looking to model, like I said, there's BNSF, UP, Canadian Pacific, and a couple of others, uh, Norfolk Southern. So most of the main players are covered. All right, well, let's come down here. Get a few more shots of it as it goes by. Hopefully my camera cooperates and don't go all out of focus. That is really beautiful. I really like that. I don't know why, but my camera has been stubborn today. All right, let's get one more track level angle here. Yeah, that is really nice. All right, well, that is a look at the Walther's train line GP15-1. Like I said, if you're looking for a budget uh, locomotive, I would definitely give this a recommend and a thumbs up. All right, well, if you enjoyed uh, watching this video, Make sure and hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you've got this locomotive or one of the other road names, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of it. Like I said, I think it's pretty good. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me today. Happy model railroading, and we'll see you next time. Take care.